What's going on guys? Welcome back to another season three video. Today, what I first, the anti-cheat system has been updated. So now it can detect other things such as like Cronuses. So if you're on controller and use a Cronus to help you with your recoil, general patch notes, these I feel like are the most important ones. The first one is the blueprints. The pro tuning is no longer removed from all attachments when altering a pro tuned blueprint. So that way you can keep those. But if you want to change one of them, you can, and it won't impact the rest of them. The next thing is bomb squad explosive damage mitigation now also applies to armor and war zone 2 damage feedback so visual feedback adjusted to increase visibility when taking damage so it'll be a little bit more clear that you're being shot at the next one is going to be death effects death effects are now visible when killing ai and then here's where the movement updates come in so dive diving fire delay has been reduced and then sliding the sliding up changing that had movement delays that would add pretty much movement and handling they ended up reducing that so that way you move a little bit faster while you're holding a weapon because obviously every single weapon in the game has its own speed so SMGs you can move faster than when you're carrying an LMG so they ended up doing a lot of movement changes to these weapons so that way the game moves a lot faster and then on top of that the one thing that I wanted to mention are the one shot snipers so now there is now a new attachment called the explosive rounds you unlock this by leveling up the MCPR it's now a new level added to that and once you unlock that you are able to put it on the MCPR the Victus XMR or the brand new intervention which is the Imperium and those have the ability to one shot anybody in Warzone 2. Alrighty, so let's jump into the weapon balances. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through them. I'm going to use this website so that way you can visually see what these changes are and for what weapons they are. And you can feel free to pause it to look at the exact details. But I'm going to try and go over the important things to speed up the video. But the first thing is the ICO Hemlock in terms of the ARs. They did see some sort of nerfs and buffs, but they didn't really do too much other than reducing damage. They mainly focus on attachments. And as you can see, the attachments for the 0.300 blackout ammunition that ended up getting a lot of changes. So there's a lot of changes that you see here and the majority of the changes for the attachments have been regards to handling and to movement because as we told you they did a movement update and the attachments do impact movement in the biggest way possible so they did obviously change that but the next thing that we have is the m13b it got a nerf and a buff so damage has been reduced in terms of upper and headshot damage but then the lower and mid-range damage has also been increased the next thing that we have is going to be the STB that ended up seeing some buffs and some nerfs, the majority of it being some buffs. The next thing is the TAC-56. So this weapon's already a meta, and on top of that, they ended up buffing it, giving it more headshot damage. So I don't know. If you like this weapon, then that's pretty good. But the next one is the FTAC Recon. Saw only straight buffs, so now it should be a better weapon overall. So movement speed has been increased. Then the next one is the Lockman 762. Movement has been increased for that. The SO14 movement speed has also been increased for this, and then minimal armor damage. And then the TAC V also ended up seeing some buffs as well. So, yet again, another metal weapon, minimal armor damage increased, movement speed increased, and then semi auto lower leg damage increased. The next thing that we have is the pistol, which is the Basilisk, ended up seeing a nerf for the armor has been reduced, but they ended up changing the attachments as well. So, the akimbo and the snake shots, the maximum armor damage has been added. The next thing is now the LMG. So, we got the raw MG. The headshot damage has been reduced. The minimum armor damage has been added. That's neutral. And then the buff is semi-auto headshot damage. And then upper torso and lower torso damage have been increased. The next thing is the RPK. That ended up seeing a nerf towards mid-range damage. And then going on, we have the Tempest Torrent. That has been nerfed as well. We obviously expect it was one of the newer weapons. Then we have the Bass P. It got a buff and a neutral change. The Lockman Sub ended up seeing the same thing. The headshot damage has been decreased but the same exact changes were applied here for the buffs. Then we got the 50 round drum, so the handling penalty has been reduced. The next things that we have is the MX-9 and the Vaznev 9K. They ended up seeing a buff, or one of them saw a buff, which is the MX-9, and then the Vaznev ended up seeing a nerf for the headshot damage. And then for the attachments, the 40 round mag has been, handling has been reduced. Then we got the Vel 46, a nerf and a buff. Going on, we got the Cast Off 545, the Cast Off 762, and the M16, all these ended up only seeing attachment changes regarding handling penalties being reduced. So that way you don't move any slower and you'll move a little bit faster. Once again, helping out with the movement speed. I want to go over the equipment changes that we have. So it says gas grenades should no longer detonate enemy explosives. Claymores in Warzone 2 only armor damage has been reduced. Flash grenade effect duration has been reduced. The frag grenade in Warzone 2 only one hit kill radius against fully armored plates have been reduced. The proximity mine in Warzone 2, the armor damage reduced and armor damage against crouch or prone players has also been reduced. And then the Semtex now kills down players when it is stuck. So that's the equipment. The next thing is the kill streaks. It says 
as players watching a kill cam after getting killed by a cruise missile will no longer be looking downwards when they respawn. Reduce the range of screen shakes of precision airstrike. The juggernaut should now be able to see a tablet screen when planting or defusing a bomb. The bomb drone in Warzone 2 only can no longer fully down armor plates. So that was the nerf that they did. The cluster mine armor damage has also been reduced. And then for vehicles, they did it so now they're able to be destroyed by melee attacks and knives will also pop will pop the tires. The next thing that we have are going to be the audio updates. It says audio, a new cinematic music slider to the front end, which will allow players to control UI music, game intros and outros, and cinematic sequences separately from music that happens during gameplay, various refinements to the footsteps and occlusion mixes. Hopefully, this audio update will be good enough. The next thing that we have is social. We have the groups request manager, quality of life improvements for requests to join groups in the social menu, and then they have the recruit a friend. So know someone who has yet to experience Call of Duty Warzone 2, you and your friend can get through by awarding the new recruit a friend program which i'll probably discuss the rewards and stuff more again but i already have in a past video but these next changes that i have right here are all bug fixes that they have done i'm not going to talk too much about them i'll have a screenshot here for you guys so if you want to pause the video to look at them you can but they're just bug fixes there's like literally hundreds of them in this patch notes but the next thing that we have is going to be the new ranked play update so with the ranked play the only thing they've done is they've now restricted the new weapon the cronin squad battle rifle it seems like the imperium it didn't get banned so that's like one of the new weapons you can use and then they also updated the game modes and maps so for cdl search and destroy these are the maps then for hardpoint you have all these maps and then for control you have those three maps but that's everything you need to know regarding rank play obviously there's new rewards and things like that you'll be able to get to the next thing that we have is the general changes for warzone 2 so you got resurgence private match added then you have private match spectating has been enabled for all available maps on uh, Mazra and Ashika Island. Then there's the after action reports that ended up getting a player. It says all players in a squad that complete a match will see an after action report. Then the bird's eye perk has now also been re enabled. So the adjustments is it now activates when a player uses a UAV kill streak. Enemy UAVs no longer triggered the bird's eye, and then UAV activated by a player using bird's eye will provide enemy headings, and then UAV pings activated by a player using bird's eye are slightly larger. And the next thing that we have right here are quality of life updates. So the minimap pink anchoring coordinates and map elements that have been pinged will now anchor the icon along the borders of the minimap. The next thing that we have is the spawn protection timeout. So spawn protection will now expire on players who remain airborne for more than 10 seconds. So you can't take you know advantage of that by just sitting in the air. The next thing, this is in addition to the current X that removes the spawn protection when they are x meters from the ground will evaluate the effectiveness of spawn protection if necessary and make adjustments based on the feedback and everything but the next thing is black site key visibility is now going to be available to all squads if it is now on the floor if it's dropped the next thing is loadout drop visuals the loadout drops that belong to you are now going to be blue while the other contested ones are going to be yellow so that way you know which ones belong to you and which ones don't now we have the gulag item hud basically anything you pick up in the gulag is going to show for a limited time so that way you know what your loadout is then we have the object elevation area Arrows, buy stations, contracts, and loot items now have a small up-down arrow on the tag map and mini-map to better indicate elevation. Those are all the important battle royale changes you need to know. The next thing that we have is for DMZ. So we got a brand new faction. They didn't give us the name, but they have arrived with three new faction missions, and then you'll get two in the reloaded update. Then we have the barter, which we've talked about before, but now you are able to create recipes and craft things. So basically, if you want to craft the backpack you can't find, you have the recipe for it. Boom, you can craft it if you have the right equipment. The next thing is the workbench. You're basically able to adjust your weapon attachments, remove attachments, add attachments, so that way your weapon is more balanced. Then the next thing is operator slot so that way you have different templates so you can put different attachments and weapons and contraband and things for each particular soldier and then you'll get to pick which soldier you want to use so you can separate them then we have private x filling so now you are able to go to a loadout and buy a x fill and that will have the opportunity to let you x fill anywhere you want so that way you don't have to deal with those people who camp at the x fills but that's some good news right there. You can also use the heavy chopper. There's a heavy chopper. All you need to do is find fuel around the map. Go, you fuel it up, and then you'll be able to use it to exfil if you fly high enough. The next thing that we have is a new contract called Supply Run. It's similar to Safe Cracker. Operators will need to locate and loot three crates. Then we have new equipment. So we have the Rebreather, which is a field upgrade that lets you breathe underwater. We have the Skeleton Key, which is a key that lets you literally open up anything. Then we have four new plates. So the Tempered is two strong armor plates, which is like the same as Battle Royale versus three plate. And 
And then you got comms, which is an audio alert when enemy players or squads are nearby and then increases the duration of UAVs. Then you have medic, which heals teammates faster. Then you have stealth will now not appear on enemy radars. Pretty much a ghost perk. And then you got two new backpacks. One is the secure, which means anything you put in that backpack will be secured even if you die. And then we have scavenger, the maximum item slot at the cost of a third weapon slot. And then that's pretty much everything you need to know. And then we got the UI, which I'll be covering in a video in more detail later where we're going to go over the UI and all the new changes that we have in terms of in the game. And then there's like a lot of gameplay updates. So regarding missions that are now have been changed, making things easier to do, increasing the amount of loot overall available for you to do more toolboxes are spawning in more field upgrades. These are just random things that they have done to pretty much make the game a little bit more enjoyable and make it easier to go through. Then obviously they have their own bug fixes, but that wraps up all the patch notes and the important things that you need to know regarding this brand new season three update. If there's anything else you guys want to see here on the channel, comment below and let me know. But it's been your boy Trito. Hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again. Peace.